Let's go back to this for a second. An open universe. So we know the universe is flat. So how can we reconcile this? Well, that we might be wrong, or this is a very indirect way to measure the curvature of the universe because we're measuring mass and using general relativity and work backwards. Wouldn't it be better if we could just measure the geometry of the universe directly? And that's something else we've been able to do in the last decade. Now, in order to understand it, we can ask a simpler question. How would you measure the curvature of the Earth if you couldn't go to outer space and look at it, and you couldn't go around the Earth? How could you measure the curvature? Well, very simple. You draw a triangle, and then if you're in the United States, you try and find a European high school student, and, and you ask, what's the sum of angles in the triangle? And they can give you the answer. And I'm sure all the Australian students here can give you the answer. It's 180 degrees, and that's right. But that's because you've learned your geometry from Euclid. In a curved surface, like the surface of the Earth, it's not true. For example, I can draw a triangle along the equator, make a right angle, go up to the North Pole, make another right angle, come back to the equator, and you will in fact see a, right, a triangle with three right angles. Three times 90 is 270, and that's not 180 degrees. So if you could draw a big enough triangle on the surface of the Earth, you would actually see that the Earth is curved. Now it turns out, while this is true for a two-dimensional surface, the same thing is true for the three-dimensional universe in which we live. If we can find a big enough triangle and measure the sum of the angles, we can measure the curvature of the universe. And we've been able to find a big enough triangle by the greatest and most important observation in cosmology in a long time. And that's the observation of something called the cosmic microwave background, the afterglow of the Big Bang. It was discovered by accident in New Jersey, of all places, by two people who did not have the slightest idea what they were doing. Okay. And they won the Nobel Prize anyway. <laughs> because this gives us a snapshot of what the universe looked like in its infancy. So let me just let me just uh, give you an idea of where it comes from. So uh, here's the Earth, and here's a, a receiver, and we're looking at galaxies, and if the galaxies are a, a, a billion light years away, we're looking at them as they look a billion years ago, because it takes light a billion years to get to them. And that means we're doing cosmic archaeology. The further out we look, the further back in time we're looking. Now, if the universe is 13.7 billion years old, which it is, then you might think if you look far enough, you'd see the Big Bang. And in principle, you would. But you can't see all the way back to the Big Bang, because between us and the Big Bang, there's a wall, just like the wall in this room, in a way. It's not a physical wall like that, but it might as well be. I can't see past that wall, because the wall's opaque. Now let's think of what happens in the universe. We're looking back in time, earlier and earlier and earlier, and at a time when the universe was about 100,000 years old, the temperature of the universe was about 3,000 degrees, and at that temperature, hydrogen, the dominant stuff in the universe, gets broken apart. The radiation is so energetic, it breaks apart protons and electrons so that they can't, when every time they try and come together, they get broken apart. And matter is no longer neutral. You have what's called the charged plasma. And a plasma is opaque to radiation, so you can't see through it. So we can't see all the way back to the Big Bang, because the universe is opaque before this time. <coughs> well, then again, it's just like looking at this wall. I can see the wall, because the wall absorbs light from those lights, and the atoms on the surface of the wall absorb that light, re it, and the air between me and the wall is transparent. Well, let's think what happens in the universe. The universe is cooling down, cooling down. Suddenly, it cools down to a temperature where photons can capture electrons. Matter can become neutral. Neutral matter is transparent to radiation. And that radiation can now make its way all the way up. So, the prediction that there's a Big Bang, one of the predictions is that we should see radiation coming at us from all directions from that time when the universe suddenly became transparent. Now that radiation will have cooled from 3,000 degrees to 3 degrees as the universe expands, and that's the radiation they discovered in New 